Hello and welcome to Wrestling and Everything Coast to Coast with your host, Buddy Sotelo Esquire and Wrestling Premier Photographer, Dr. Mike Leno. But we have a very special guest that goes back a long time for both me and Mike, and that is the indomitable, well, it used to be Caesar Black, but I think you've now you've now no, changed he's characters. Caesar Black, right? He's Caesar Black, manager of champions, one of the greats, one of the all pro wrestling in Northern California, <laughs> truly wonderful people. I know in his managerial position, maybe not so, but this is our second <laughs> Tony Jones tribute show. And uh, Dominic uh, Caesar Black was very close to Tony and, uh, you, you know, one of those I corresponded with uh, immediately after getting the Mike Modest uh, post that uh, just really tore apart our hearts. Uh, but Caesar, tell us about all of your experiences uh, with Tony and, uh, this is really, uh, you know, what's what's going on because we don't know of any service information or anything. And I, uh, you've been in contact with Tony Jr., his son that he was so proud of after he lost his daughter. But Dom, let me, uh, Caesar, let me let you go and talk about uh, our Tony Jones right now. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, and really, it's good to see you guys again too. Also, um, Tony, uh, I think the thing I want to say about Tony, like I been uh trying to encapsulate it because we were so opposite he's super stoic and i'm super hyper <laughs> you know what i mean so i know i bugged him <laughs> you know what I, mean? I know i i know i worked his nerves like one of the last thing he actually told me was your texting is interrupting my sleep i, I have the text because <laughs> I, I was blowing his phone up like i wanted him so i'm doing the magic pro wrestling and i wanted tony jones like i wanted i wanted Tony in my wrestling. Whenever I do wrestling, I want Tony in it. Because for what he stands for in Northern California. Perfect. Period. So I, you know, with Imagine, I was like, man, I'm, I'm trying to think maybe I should start a school. What kind of school would I start? And I started thinking about Tony Jones. I'm like, what would the WWE want? He was the prototype. You know what I mean? And I honestly, like, just like a shooter. You know, his body type, his, his mannerisms, his professionalism. He was a pro wrestler. I that that's I can't say any plainer than that. He's everything we should be in this business, and um, I always wanted that in my uh, curriculum, I guess. So I called him up. I literally called him up about three weeks ago, and I was like, "Hey, man, I'm thinking about starting a school. Would you be interested in helping me come up with a, a plan, a curriculum?" And he's like, "I can't commit because I'm not 100 percent." You know, I mean, I just talked to him, and um, our bond is when I did Fox City, he he became a member of the Cecil Black Experience. Um, but all his time at APW, because he didn't have, you know, Tony Jr. and his daughter passed and all the whatnot, his first time wrestling in front of his family was at DNA Lounge at Fox City. And he never let me let forget that. Brother, thank you. You know, you gave me my match in front of my family. And that kind of is who he was, man. Like, it wasn't about... He was about... He just was about family. He was a family dude. And, like, and he treated us wrestling people in the wrestling like and, I'll, and i'm gonna and i and i gotta and i'm gonna say this they might ruffle some feathers modest and morgan and those dudes at apw and you know this Stella, as far as wrestling schools go it was a cool place to be but they were shit as far as smoking in the building murdoch it was it was a crazy environment it was a crazy time you know what i'm saying and he was just stoic. There was a lot of partying going on there was a lot of yeah. partying going on and yeah and yeah now i'll say tony jones wasn't a part of that and he wasn't a part of it. He was stoic, and he was the, he was a very he was the, he was the one. He was very to me, always to me, always to me, uh, the uh, the center, the rod. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would say he was like Mark Smith. Mark Smith also wasn't like a really crazy partier either. He, right, he wasn't not, the same way. And it's not about the party, but I'm saying for like, for learning the business, Bison and Tony. They were about the business, like, and you know, we go, we go, we, we do shows, and they were about the show. You know what I mean? It was, it was about, it was about, it was about us, you know, loading in the ring, getting it. They were, they, it was just, it was about the business. You know what I mean? And and that's one thing about him. Like, I remember, um, I, I guess his footprint on me is the fact that, as a black man, he was so just proper, dope. Like that's what you want. Black men to be. Sorry. 
You know what I said? What I said. You just want last... anyone to be like that. It, was, uh, it doesn't matter what color they are. It's just, yeah. Wanted, it's... You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I get it. I get, get it. Look up to. But, but Caesar, what I said was uh, last week about Tony and on websites and stuff was he was a consummate professional. He was a like a mature guy. You know, sometimes wrestling locker rooms it can be you know some childlike stuff and Absolutely. you know goofing high school often. plus. I always call it Tony, high school plus. It's mega high but school. Tony, people, so you're right. Tony Jones was like a, a Lou Thez in terms of being a professional, having everybody's respect because of what he accomplished as a decorated Wait, amateur. You watched to him. He was never late. I never saw Tony Jones be late to a single show. He yeah. always showed up early, worked out, and he went over his matches relentlessly and cared so much about his product even if we were only wrestling in front of like 50 people he still <laughs> gave matter. it all it didn't matter and he watched people's matches too a lot of cats didn't want he watched people so if you walk into me what you think about my match he would know because he watched that shit you know oh what you mean? know what else at, the, at icebox robert smith shows in alameda and elsewhere tony would often meet up with me in the back he wasn't on the card but he came he often brought his son who has had a podcast on wrestling for a number of years, and I think his son is very good at athletics as well. But yeah, Tony was, uh, he, he was like the serious dude, but he also, you know, had, it was very warm. He was a professional, <laughs> ultra professional, but he was a warm human being too. He wasn't like ice cold or anything like oh, that. So real. he, right? Real. That, 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 you summed it up, Mike. He was, as consummate professional, but super personable. Like you wanted to be his friend. You wanted his approval. You wanted to make sure Tony, you know what I mean? Like, and I and I and I'd say that's really weird. Like, I really wanted, I wanted Tony in my locker room. Like, needed it. Like, I made the call to like, yo, I want you in my locker room. You know what I'm saying? That was that's the kind of guy he is. When you do a show, you want that dude around. Because if he's in your locker room, everybody else stands too. Officer on deck. You know what I'm saying? And that's not a lot of that. You know what? I looked up some of my photos. The uh, uh, the guy with the Chad Gaspar who passed away trying to save his son out in the ocean down here in the like Newport Beach. Yeah, I have photos of Tony backstage with Chad and uh, the other gentleman who was his tag team partner in WWE. But I have oh, shots, you know. Me. Yeah, yeah, very two, all three of them, great guys. And that's what I loved about Icebox's uh, shows because, you know, very diverse locker room. It was like uh, Fog City wrestling well prior to that, uh, the DNA and other venues in San Francisco, which is actually most people will have said that's the first place they ever saw Luke Perry, the actor, bringing up his very young son, uh, you know, Jack, who's now, you know, in New Japan. But your shows, Dominic Jerry's, uh, Caesar Black's, Fog City Wrestling, Tony, I can't remember uh, who Tony might have uh, been in feuds with or what have you, because you well, had a, a number it was, of... It was, it was Scum. We were, we were fighting Scum. We were fighting Scum. And, and Shane. Yeah, it was Shane. It was, you know, me and Shane, me and Shane hate each other. We, you know, we've been hate each other since, like, the dawn of time. That, that, that feud's never going to end. That's blood feud. Like, I might go to Ugwood Jam and jump on him just because I'm getting hyped about it. <laughs> like, like that goes back man like i brought him in and i remember and i remember when i asked dude think about this just real fast in the season by experience virgil tony those were those were two of my virgil core guys flynn, virgil, flynn, virgil flynn who we another guy we miss yeah terribly virgil, young guys incredible athlete never experience, though. He, don't forget about she. i never forget about she yeah my, my boy said yeah she but like as far as but as far as um as far as the season black experience goes, I had Virgil, Virgil drop kick Shane from behind, like when he when he joined, and then you know I had I had Tony Jones. So just for local Bay Area season black experience, you know me it was me and Slim always. But as far as our our auxiliary members, Tony was the first guy I called when I needed backup. Then I called Virgil, and they were both like, "Yeah, we're doing this." You know what I mean? That's that's you know that's family. Like you know what I mean? That's family. Like um, I talked to Anthony. Yesterday, two days ago, and I was just like, you know, just so you understand, you got a family, <laughs> like you know what I mean. Your your dad set you up, but we got you for life. You know what I mean? You wanted, and, and I told him, told him, like, if you want to get in this business, come see me first. Come see Papo. You know, Papo Esco's one of my really close homies. He's actually the champion of the Imagine right now. Um, and uh, you know, and he and him and Tony were super tight too. So um, so I just let him know, you know, you've got family. 
if anything, man, I'm just thinking, I'm gonna I'm gonna give props to Roland, man. This goes to APW. This goes to me and Buddy's little history. You know, we I've been everywhere with this business. I've never felt family like I feel in NorCal, business wise. I don't think there's more tri. It's more tribal here. I don't know if it's because we're you were condensed area, but we need each other. And we take a loss like Tony, and it's devastating. There's there, you know there's there's drops in the river and there's ripples and there's a, a tsunami <laughs> like the Tony brings. You know what I'm saying? Like he's the kind of dude who actually influenced all of us. <laughs> like you know what I mean? Um, yeah, and it's crazy because me and Modest, it's we weren't we were disconnected for a long time. <laughs> Something happened, and we ended up actually making up and being like we're, we talk now too, and um. I just, you know, I, you know, the thing people always talk about, you know, iron, iron. People, I'm, I'm glad me and, you know, me and buddies didn't contact, but a lot of people, you know, I'm, I'm very, I've never been in this business to be famous. That's not my goal. My goal is to make people famous. Does that makes sense. I'm here, to, I'm here to, I'm here to make wrestlers famous. I'm not here to be the guy. So I'm very forgettable. I didn't go to wrestling school to be a wrestler. I went to school to learn the business to run Fox City. So I wasn't, I, I never, bumping was never my intent. You know what I mean? So. Well, you were doing it. you did it that way, by the way. Be glad you did it that way. I've, I've got a lot of souvenirs that, that I'm, I'm now in my late 50s. <laughs> now I'm realizing how much, how dumb an idea that was to begin with. But. You know, but I, I was saying, I, Caesar, did it, Caesar and Fox City did it before. Something like Hood Slam, which utilized a number of APW talent and then repackaged them, but Fox City did it first. And I, you know, I came to the party late, which I regret uh, because I didn't really know Caesar at that point that well, or I didn't know who was running it. I didn't know it was Caesar, etc. And then I saw like, he's bringing in all of this incredible, insane TNA great talent, starting with Kia Stevens, Awesome Kong, and Savio Vega, and a number of guys, um, all kinds of folks. So it wasn't limited to and Raven ATW, on one of your shows. You had Raven on one of your Raven, shows. Raven, we had Raven on three shows. Three Raven shows. Was there for, Raven was around for a minute. I learned a lot. I was like, I picked Raven's brain. Uh, I picked Raven. I picked Raven and Savio's brains pretty much clean. <laughs> I got notebooks of fucking. I got notebooks of shit that I picked up from these cats, man. Like people don't know, man. Like I, you know, a thing. And this Hernandez, yeah. Hernandez was up there. Let me just quickly say, Roland and I went back to about 1972 because I used to come up from LA. My home base territory on, was on, Los Angeles. I was born in '73, Mike. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, get used to that, Dom. You'll get lots of stuff. I'm approaching. I'm approaching fucking six years old. But that's what I'm saying. I used to come up, and my secondary home base was as Roy for Sh Roy Shire's only photographer for his program, and that was that was my secondary home base. So I would have to schlep up, either fly until I could drive the 380 miles to cover Roy's Battle Royals every January and his bigger shows throughout the years from about '72 on until I moved up there. But so Roland and I and Eddie Moretti, we all knew each other from like '72. And so when Roland started the school, you know, Tony, I believe, was in the second year. Spike Modest, Donovan Morgan, Matt Heisen, who became Spike Dudley, uh, Mike Lockwood, yeah. who was Aaron O'Grady later, became Crash Holly, et cetera. Super Diablo were the guys in the first class. Tony was in the second. But so I was there for Tony's training. And then when with Ricky Thompson and then Tony, I think, was introduced. I forget, you know, because he did a lot of he was teaming with Mike Modest, and then he was feuding with him and Gigolo Steve Rosano and those guys, and then the outdoor matches with Vic Grimes and Aaron O'Grady and Rosano and Modest and Frank Murdoch, and you know somebody got run over by a car outside the garage there. Hayward <laughs> Cal, all this shit. So there, there's a lot of history, and, and guys like Tony saved many Kirk White BTW shows. You know I. I was obviously a, a Roland guy, but I was hired by Kirk White to do his PR for a number of those fan fests until he stiffed me and ripped me off. But there was, you know, if, if Kirk White had to just go by the talent that he had, 
he would, you know, never sell out that Newark venue. So he had to do the fly-ins, you know, like one to two name guys. And he often brought in, I mean, pretty much everybody at one point or another from APW came and worked there. Sparky Ballard, an APW oil ref, refed a number of BTW shows, you know, up until <laughs> Kirk's pass. I don't know what the fuck is going on now that uh, Kirk's wife is running that. I hear they're still doing shows every couple of months and, you know, more power to them and all that. But that's where the tribalism kind of is. But, you yeah. know, when everybody left APW after the King of the Indies in 2001 to form Iron, you know, I, I was still going to cover APW, but Iron was like everybody I knew. Bodice, more everybody was there. Even uh, Sarah D'Amato starting yeah. to work under her own name. Uh, you know, and... and We'd see Tony there a lot, but he kind of was, I, I think, doing some other things once that split happened. He was at King of the Indies, of course, and in that battle royal with everybody who weren't in the, you know, the final finals. But uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm lucky. I'm lucky. I'm lucky. I went to Iron. I got to know all them. I was there, you know, when um, Sal, Sarah. You know, um, they were there. Uh, Seth was there. Psycho Seth um, was there. I'm lucky. Like I'm, I'm lucky because I, I got, because I got to know. I got both sides of it because I got to know Roland. I got to know Roland through Chick by through Dedrick because Dedrick would do his, the Black Pants meetings on Tuesday nights, and so I, I got to know him in a, in a meetings, um, not in a gym setting. I got to know him in a table setting. And we talked about things like YouTube, and we talked about things like the. the um, I, I was I was always stoked for the APW Internet title. I thought that was the most innovative shit. You know what I mean? Like that's the kind of thinking I like. Like here's this here's this old white dude from like Hayward. He's got the internet chat. I mean, before the internet's even a thing. You know what I'm saying? That's a, that's a, that's that's some thinking. You know what I mean? Like so. Yeah, I, I, managed, got some... I managed the internet title for for part of the early days of when the championship first came into being. So with me and Vinny. We really kicked that off, and it was that's awesome. was quite quite the rage. I agree. It was. I, I there's no other film that's ever done an internet title, as far as I know. No, no, because Roland, Roland was very first yeah, after ECW to air the shows live on the net. You know, the Jim Wars shows. Roland was doing that. I was a commentator briefly, uh, doing play by play with Steve Rosano, Gigolo doing Gigolo. color with me, and the number of of different guys after that were far better but it was innovative of roland roland even before that starting around 97 was doing a cable access show yep. where he had me come in I, I would do the news but he had all of his talent getting themselves over and tony was on pretty much every show for however long that was an hour a year and a half from about 96 97 on on cable access in san francisco the east bay on comcast or the predecessor was united artists cable you know what's and cool is, and Buddy can speak to this. When you manage a guy like, and Buddy was lucky. Buddy got to manage my Bison in a mask and fucking. But when you manage a legit, when you manage a legit fucking hurt a hitter, a scooter, you feel tough. Like it's kind of cool. Like you know what I mean? Like it's when you're when you when you're managing like when you're managing wrestlers. It's one thing, but when you manage a dude you know can throw somebody over the top, you kind of feel different. It's a trip when you manage Tony. It was like, I felt tough. And I know I annoyed that. Like I said, everything I'm saying, I know I annoyed the shit out of that man. Because, <laughs> like, I'm so, we are so different. <laughs> like, like, well, you, know, you, ever like, see the, you ever see the um, uh, Warner Brothers cartoon where it's this big, big bulldog, and then yes. there's this little uh, yapping that, dog. The yes. yappy dog, and the, the yappy dog gets the big bulldog in trouble all the time, and hey, commits hey, Tony, the big hey, bulldog. Hey, Tony, go to the ring, want to go to the ring? <laughs> that's that's what I did. And that's what you did, and I love that shtick. That was great stuff. You know, WWE doesn't do anything like that, and AEW doesn't do anything like that now. And it just that's something I miss it's so just, much in wrestling is that you know, because Tony wasn't great on the mic. I mean, he was no. great in everything else. But he just yeah. wasn't comfortable giving a, a. But he was always around guys that were so good on the mic that he just could look tough, and everybody else did his talking for him. He yep, pulled his arms. arms. Pulled his arms. <laughs> and then, you know, like, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. That dude's gonna whip your ass. And then, as ass. soon as he got in the ring, he did all his the, his work in the ring. Did all his talking for him, and people were like, oh yeah, he is tough. You know. So, so I'm glad. Uh, you guys 
see, let me get serious for a second. I want to see if Caesar knows what service information. If people, if there's a charity set up that people can contribute. I, and Tony's I, I do not, and how I do does not, his son? Get, I not, uh, I, I, we're hoping I he. Ever, um, I will ask Anthony Jr. and I will relate to the people as I get it. How about that? The, you Please, know, yeah, uh, let email. our listeners know. Yeah. Russ, you know, I was hoping I, want, I was hoping we would get Anthony Tony Jr. on the show. Uh, do you even know when the service is? Because it's only been no. a little over a week. No, I you know, okay. like I said, I just I just I, I I've been I've been in contact with him. I haven't asked him about that yet. I'm giving you know, like I'm, I'm trying to get I'm trying to get a kid, you know, that space. Let him know right. let him know where but I don't you know, it's like again, it's like I I could I I'm not even close to my father and I couldn't imagine losing him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and, well, I lost like, my dad and, two years ago, so they were super close. Every time, yeah. every time the the last couple of say five six years, like at the Cow Palace shows, the Tony was in those battle royals. The two Cow Palace shows, Marcus ran. Oh, and how many props to Marcus Mack for like getting Tony in the Cow Palace? Can we just put? Make, can I put that on wax? It's official. Like much love to Marcus Mack for getting Tony Jones in. That that what I'm saying is is that Tony Tony brought his son Tony Jr. and he was so proud the last couple of years anywhere I would see him backstage what have you <clears throat> until I, I sadly moved the, he always was putting over his son as loving pro wrestling and amateur wrestling and having a podcast on pro wrestling which I thought was great because he was young when I met Tony Jr. Yeah, but we were hoping maybe maybe Caesar you could bring Tony because I was hoping he was going to do the show. And I thought when I emailed him that we would have him, but you know, you have to take into account he's going through probably a million things. I don't know if he has to run whatever service or is going to be happening. Plus take care of his dad. Uh, you know, I can't imagine a young guy, a teen having to, uh, to go, through that, let alone possibly running all of that stuff for the family. So I want you to tell, Anthony, that we send our love. This is our second Tony Jones show. And, and if you're able to bring him, Anthony, next week, the week after, whenever he's able I'll, I'll to talk. I will definitely hit him up and let him know. And I, I'm sure he's got a ton to say. Um, he was very, you know, actually, Mike, he was stoked. Like, when I told him to send pictures, he lit up. He was stoked. So I'm sure he, I'm sure he would love to come on. When he, when he, I'm sure he would love to come and say some, some cool stuff about his pops. His pops is awesome. Um, because here's a, here's a story. I'll try to make it brief uh, that I told, and I've sent out the photos now. I sent them to Marcus and Sparky Ballard, etc. But after uh, a Cow Palace WCW, I think it was I'm pretty sure it was a pay per view, and a lot of the time I was in the back. So Ric Flair asked me back at the hotel. He said he was going to take me out to eat after that pay per view was over, whatever it was, a Super Brawl. And I said, "Can I bring my friend Tony? He's right here with me. We rode there. I gave Tony a lift to it." And blah blah blah. And he said, "Sure." And so we're having dinner and Tony's enjoying red wine with Ric Flair, you know, sitting, I, I made, cause I sat next to Rick many times. So I had Tony sit next to Flair instead. And I took pictures of them together, holding up Cabernet and Tony forever. I want that picture. I sent you the picture. I sent it out to Dave Dutra, to AJ Kirsch, to, to I want that Sparky. Picture. To I want that picture. Please, but I have Tony. I post Tony with lots of folks like Van Dam and Sabu, and pretty much anybody. You know, when Tony and I drove up with Roland to the uh, uh, what was that character's name that had the the Indian in Vegas and then uh, up in Sacramento. But Alexis Smirnoff, I post Tony with like the Navajo uh, Joe. Navajo Joe. No, that wasn't. It was that 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 guy that stiffed Terry Funk, and then he went out of business. He had Steve Sachs, the former Dodger, get in the ring and try to wrestle. And that guy's a dick. You know. Yeah. <laughs> so. That guy's a dick. <laughs> Sachs, Republican dick. Tony, Tony did not put up with bullshit. He did not like the more carny people in wrestling. And I know he had a love hate with Roland because Roland was a bit carny, as you know, from Beyond the Mat. Uh, there's a lot of stories that go beyond that. I was the still image photographer for Barry Blaustein, the producer, and Barry Bloom, the super agent of wrestling, was the money guy behind Beyond the Mat. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we can talk about 
time. But Tony was in the film, as were, you know, some others. Long story on that. I've known Barry Blaustein forever. And in fact, at the West Coast, I think Russ, you guys both might have been there at the uh, West Coast. I don't even know if they do it anymore. They had annual awards for their Hall of Fame. And uh, I was inducted on the same night that Tony inducted Beyond the Mats director, producer, showrunner, Barry Blaustein. I forget if that was in Modesto or if that was at uh, Sparky's. I think that was the one at Sparky's place in uh, Pacifica, uh, right? You know, his gym at the time for his promotion in school, Gold Rush. Rush. And the promotion of, uh, yeah, of APW's uh, uh, boot camp, which Sparky took over and Roland passed. Yeah. But Tony... You know, had this love hate thing because he knew at times Roland was full of bullshit, but Roland loved wrestling and had the good side to him as well. And, um, yeah, Roland was just a character. I mean, it, when I was shooting ringside, Dave Meltzer would be five rows back taking the notes, the serious notes and Eddie Moretti and Roland would be watching the action from the back, but at the same time trying to pick up chicks, pick up girls, you know, this was 1973, 74, 75, 76. I thought you guys did in the 70s. And, yeah, we were all tight. The glorious, and then, time, the glorious time but, to be alive. You know, Tony could see through whatever Roland would bullshit, you know, like claiming he babysat Dwayne Johnson at the Cow Palace. Tony could see. He was the first to say, Mike, that's bullshit, right? He, he could tell. He could tell when Roland was kind of. You know, and Roland was Roland, uh, but he would polarize things and sort of make things a lot bigger than they were. But, you know, whatever. Tony could smell bullshit. And um, that's the stoic, my opinion. He was a stoic guy. But that's a good contrast to pretty much everybody else around wrestling is nuts. And here's this serious, on the level, genius IQ guy collegiate back do you know much uh caesar about his uh, amateur background i mean he was really he was, well known around the world as a decorated he was, he was, just, a, he was a re- le- legit badass he, you see you see us you yeah you see at um, the university right ucsf yes right? UCSF. yeah yeah when, when, when we did a show at ucsf and he did it in front of his wrestling coach you know from ucsf it was a big deal for him when we did do a, a Kizar Auditorium, you know, the place yeah. where we did a show there. And Tony was able to, you know, uh, present an award to his, uh, to, to his former uh, 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 wrestling coach. And it meant a lot to him. You know, the thing to me about Tony Jones was just because he was so real outside the ring and he brought that outside the ring into the ring, he made what he did in the ring incredibly believable. I don't think there's anyone that would ever come up to Tony Jones and say, hey, why are you doing something that's all fake? You know, no, no one no. would ever have the guts to say that no. to Tony. And he wouldn't he, he would show you how fake it really was if you really pushed him on it. His his, his the other thing that's, that's his, weird is that uh, I'll be brief. Tony, when he was a heel early on, you know, he just everybody loved him. He was not getting any heat. People were showing him love, you know. It was hard for the audience to, and that's why he was finally eventually turned and started feuding with Modest, you know, very early on in APW, along with Kwame Kamosi, the original West Side players, who, you know, much later came in, uh, Bad Boy Boyce Grand. But, uh, uh, yeah, Tony... I, 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 I hit up Boyce. I talked to Boyce a few days ago. Because, I mean, you know, he's been, he's, you know, bomber. He's the guy. He's He's like the... Boyce is like the the sponge of it all. He's got all him and Vinny Massaro, I think, have the most NorCal in them. Like if 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 if, if Krypton exploded, they would be the brainiacs. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? I think they have the most absorbed NorCal. But you have a resume. Nineteen ninety-seven, there was a uh, Russ probably remembers there was a Kryptonite junior heavyweight in APW. Speaking of Oh Kryptonite. yeah, I worked I worked with him. I worked with Kryptonite. Shows. But you know what? We have not asked with Bomber Robert. Uh, he, he wasn't really related to Ricky uh, Thompson, but Robert Thompson, Bomber, I'm sure out of anyone would probably have the most serious remembrances from day one of uh, of Tony. 
Have you I talked to, to Robert? I, I talked to, so I call Papa uh, Brown Bomber Jr. He's, <laughs> he's basically Brown Bomber Jr. I talk to him all, every day almost. Basically, he's like my boy. Um, and we did a road trip together uh, uh, down to Imagine when we put the gloves on him. And, um, man, we just talked about the bomber. And, like, I saw, so I had a really, you know, me and Gabe have had an up and down relationship, it's, it's, you know. Because he's, he's Gabe and I'm me. Again, I'm not the most likable person. And I'm also not one of those kind of people that wants to be liked. So if you don't like me, I'm good with that. Kind of, kind of, like, I'm not going to go out of my way to try to make you like me if you don't like me. You know what but I mean? But Gabe have a down relationship <laughs> and it never went up. So, you know, you can say up and down for you and him. Mine was down and never went back up. So yeah, I'll give you well, credit. I, yeah, I, you know, it was Shannon. Shannon pulled the like, Because, you know what I mean? Like, it was, it was Shannon. Honestly, his wife is dope. Like, she actually was like, you guys, are, you guys need to stop eating. And she was like, you guys, you guys think the same. That's why you beef. He, he, Roland, he didn't like me because Roland gave me attention. Because, you know, because we were doing the Fox City thing. And it was taking, like, taking his, like, you know, taking his dad away from him, kind of. So we had that kind of thing. You know, so and we, we worked it out. But uh, Papo, you know, and, um, and, and I respect, dude, fucking Gabe. Come on, man. The guy's got a triple-A level blue company. Literally. We can't, we, who are we bullshitting? He's literally got a, tri- he might be the, if I'm if I'm if I'm actually correct, he probably banks about the fifth highest out of Indies. You know, You're right. way, he's he's there. He's there. And it he shows you. It shows are always sold out. He's got a big one with uh, oh gosh, almost everybody is on there. Uh, La Park and yeah. uh, Doctor Wagner. You know, yeah, he's always got the he, guys in Lucha. He did, he did it right. He did it right. You can't I can't knock his also. He did it right, man. He did it right. You know, and it goes, and again, and it goes, and let's go back to telling you with this. You know, I, you know, um, there, there, there are people in this world that you just, if they're not in the fold, you don't get respect, I think. And so I think even with like, you know what I'm saying? Like if he, it, all of us want to do wrestling and you can speak to this too, buddy. When I first got in, when I first came to NorCal, I was the invader almost kind of, even though, cause nobody remembers I went to Iron. So all of a sudden, there's this guy who's starting this show in San Francisco, bumping everybody, rubbing everybody, getting talent from, um, I took your guys, I took the twins, because you had bad apples. So I got your guys. I took the best. I do. I did what Vince did. I cleaned, I emptied the closets. I made everybody work together. That's what made Fog City different than everything else. Fog City different than everything else. You know what I mean? But before me, everybody had their show here, their show here, their show here, and they didn't work together. Fog City made everybody work together. And all of a sudden, we were like, oh, shit, NorCal's dope if we work together. And that's when NorCal really had its explosion. You know what I mean? But having Tony in the fold, because I couldn't get modest at that time. You know what I mean? I couldn't even get AJ Kirsch because AJ wasn't working at that time. You know what I mean? I had, you had young Dave Dutra. You know what I mean? And so me and Roland talked about it. I'm like, yo, how do I make this thing go? And he's like, you need Tony. <laughs> and I was like, you're not wrong. <laughs> like, yo, Tony, what are we doing here? You and know? your big thing was that you got regular broadcast television on TV20 which hadn't had wrestling for decades on it, you were able to get a deal on there, which really impressed the hell out of me. How'd you get that deal? Persistence. I took my daughter. She was actually in a car seat during the meeting. I'm not even shitting you. That's, that's a story for another day. <laughs> like, like, my, I had a newborn. I had a newborn, a wrestling promotion, and ambition bro that's really what it was bro like sometimes you hear these stories about like companies like a lot of what it takes to make a wrestling company go is how much you're willing to put into it do you wake up in the morning and go some cats are like you know you can you can throw money at a show it's easy i love west coast wrestling because they, they put my boys on they've actually developed but it's easy to throw money at a show you know what i mean that doesn't make you a wrestling promoter it makes you a guy who puts money into a show Mark. waking up in the morning thinking about how can I make this baby grow locally? Who do I talk to locally? Businesses locally. Making connections with No Name from Live 105. Having clout. Even getting that meeting. I had to have clout to get that meeting. Having Live 105 in my pocket got me that meeting. Doing you know the, the, BF, the BFD show got me that meeting. But without any of that, without Tony saying, yo, Fox City's real, come work, I don't get sheep. I don't get the twins. I don't get people because I'm just some dickhead throwing wrestling shows. And you didn't do that in the Bay Area. You know we're what I'm winding up. Uh, Caesar, I want you to talk about Imagine. And, uh, you know, we're still, of course, this is our second Tony Jones tribute show since we lost our brother. 
But I, I didn't even know until I got one of your emails today. So tell us about Imagine before we let you go and where people can find out about it and support it. Right on. Well, Imagine Pro Wrestling makes me smile. It's my shit. It's my, it's my, it's my Basquiat. <laughs> I guess it's my, my final, it's my love letter to pro wrestling and hip hop and skating and all things underground. I grew up in the, um, me and Buddy, we grew up in the Bones Brigade era. You know I mean? We grew up in the Bones Brigade era, Tony Hawk, you know, you remember that, Buddy? And what was the cool thing about those? I'm not, I'm so like the not skateboarder, you know. Uh, I know, uh, I know, but you, but you remember the era. Oh, I know the era, yeah, but I was not part of that. Yeah. I was, you know, playing. So, I, so you guys know I'm from Long Beach. I grew up a Sublime. I grew up a Snoop Dogg. I grew up a Snoop Dogg. That, that's literally, that's, that's, my, that's my wheelhouse right there. So for me, Imagine was, how do I make my childhood yours? Really, honestly. So we basically, like, one of, so the, the, the whole thing with Imagine is, it's, it's graffiti-based. Like, spray can graffiti-based. It's hip-hop-based. It's like, because matches are going to happen. You, you get good talent together, matches are going to happen. How do you present it? You know what I'm saying? And we're just presenting it different. We're presenting it with beats and rhymes. We're presenting it. I'm presenting it the way I want my TV to look. Remember Liquid Television on TV? Think I love Liquid Television. That's one of my favorite shows of all time. <laughs> then wow. there you go. You're going to love Imagine because Imagine is going to start with skating. It's going to have scratching. It's going to have um, <laughs> MC. It's going to have art. And then it's going to have good matches. Papa Wesco is our champion. Um, I developed. I've I've designed three belts. I don't know if you guys have seen them. I'll send you, I'll send you pictures of them. I've developed three belts. I, I I made a belt called the Gatekeeper, which is um, which is defended Ogwa. That's my belt. Uh, it's a belt that actually is the number one contender belt, or it's like the guy who's gonna be your guy. It's a that intercontinental title title type of belt. Uh, and I was gonna use it for. I was working for Comptomania when I made it, but actually now uh, I gave it. I actually gave it to Anthony Trevino and gave it to Ogwa. So it's it's an actual Ogwa belt now. Um, then I developed the Savage, which is about the pop holes, heavyweight belt. And um, I actually used the Broken Skull belt, the Stone Cold template. This is the belt that's written made on, and uh, the centerpiece is actually a silverback gorilla skull. <laughs> and the belt doesn't have any flags on it. It's got animals on it instead of flags because it's a world title, not an American title. I think flags on belts is kind of passe. And um, then I just developed a new belt called the Accord, which I basically just took a Jolly Roger flag and all my favorite things about piratism and put it into a belt that's our number one title for the um for imagine and uh yeah and imagine is just it's fun it's fun it's competitive and it's 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 like you know we got alpha zoe coming in we got papo esco sean black from uh, la who's a veteran uh, we have a really cool women's division um we're bringing this girl pj lowry she's actually a knox pro trainee we have uh, scarlet rose so our women's division is competitive we have lucha we got ray genesis you know, I'm, I'm my thing. My big thing with wrestling is finding talent, and you know, and giving. You know, I don't need. I'm not a guy who needs to fly people in. I'll make you think the guys that I have are stars. I present a star product. The way you present your product is the way people look at your product. If I drop an indie and go, it's an indie. It's an indie. If I go to Imagine, it's Imagine. Nobody calls what I do. Nobody's ever called Fox City an indie. Have you ever heard of Fox City before? It's an indie. Fox City. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't, I don't look at what I do as an indie. I look at it as I do business. So let's do business. We do big business. You know what I mean? And that's fun. So if you if you present the product like that, why wouldn't you go look at it? You know what I mean? If I if I, if I make you go look at it, you go look What's at the that. website. Where can people go to support Imagine Pro Wrestling? Instagram, Facebook. <laughs> um, you can always go check me out, Dom Da Vinci on Instagram. Uh, Boom Shasta is a guy you guys want to follow. Follow Boom Shasta. That's the guy who's that's that's my creative partner. That's my partner. He's he's the um it's really funny because I'm the old man. He's the yeah, he's my he's my young, he's my Padawan, I guess. But um he's my he's the but he's like I he, I've never met anybody I'm never, like I'm a sausage, I'm a sausage maker and he can case it. I spit stuff to him and he makes it happen. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like so yeah, so check out Boom Shasta, check out Imagine. We have a show on May 4th called May the Fourth Be With You. And, uh, and, uh, and yeah, man, and you know, and we're doing. Where's that going to be at? It's in Ventura, the 805. Yeah. Wow, so you're, you're in SoCal now. You're 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 in SoCal now. No, I was in SoCal, and I'm I'm back. I'm, I'm in Concord right now. 
Oh, okay. I was in SoCal. That's where I met Boom Shasta. He always wanted to start a uh, promotion in his hometown. And I gave him, I gave him Imagine. Like, I, I created Imagine during COVID. And it was just sitting stagnant in my brain. And then he said, you want to run a show? And I gave it to him. And he took it and just gave it to him. He took it Are you playing any NorCal shows? Yes, I am. Imagine's coming to NorCal. Well, when you are ready to do a show back in NorCal, get back to us and we'll help promote it for you. Because, you, you know, I, I, I'd like to really help will you. Will you come? Yeah. You I'll, come drive up, I'll drive up there from SoCal. 40 years in the Bay Area, and we're stuck moving back to SoCal to take care of my wife's mom. I miss the Bay Area. I miss my family like Caesar Black and Russ and everybody up there. Uh, we're winding down. It's there, though. Is Does Imagine, for an old fart like me, does it have an official website all by itself or no? No. Nope. No, it's all, it's the, you know, the kids. You know, kid, you don't have to, I don't think kids today are used to, you know, so the following of everybody that you, uh, you've mentioned yeah. is big. Any, so if you're able to, in the next week, two weeks, whenever uh, Anthony Tony Jr. is, you know, able to emotionally ready to come talk about his father caesar i want you to bring him to the show i was hoping to have him on with absolutely, us today absolutely i'll talk Second to him tony jr. How about but this, this is a guy i stop talking about yeah tony on, was such a uh, i'm gonna say, say one thing i'm gonna drop i'm gonna drop one thing on you because matt matt my roommate but he's been pressing me i'm gonna say this how about this i'm gonna give you guys an exclusive right now i've been trying and failing miserably to get something started here. I've been wanting to do for a long time, and I think February, I'm going to do the Onyx Cup. And the Onyx Cup is going to be a black history, black wrestlers tournament, and we're going to do Tony Jones' bracket. That's that's my word. That's what you guys are getting right now. I'm going to do the Onyx Cup next February in the Bay Area. Make Mark that down. Write that Please down. let us help you promote it. Please Absolutely. let us help you. Absolutely. Write it down. You're hearing it here first. I'm awesome. The, I'm doing the Onyx Cup. I've been I've been putting it off, but there's enough talent here now in NorCal to handle it. And God damn it, let's do the Onyx Cup and let's get the best black wrestlers out there and let's put Tony's name on a on a trophy and let's uh let let's do that. How about that? I am all for it. Here, How about that? You guys know, you may not know. I I helped Julian Shabazz with his book on the history of african-american wrestlers our jackie robinson's in no particular order luther lindsey bobo brazil bearcat wright dory dixon sweet daddy seeky sailor r thomas those are just uh, shag thomas ernie ladd obviously tiger conway senior those are just a smattering Don't forget of the patterson. exceptional yo you guys want to hear a funny story people patterson even uh uh, Zulu, Ron, uh, what about, what about Iceman, what about Iceman King Parsons? Iceman King Parsons. Iceman. 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 One of my uh, favorite, Hank one of my favorite, Jay one of my favorite, well, Hank, Hank was who was rooming Iceman King Parsons, Brazil, Buddy Roberts. Uh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Hey, check this out, See, though. Thank you so true much. Story. True Wait, story. Wait, let Tom talk. Come on. True story. My great-grandfather, Leo McCamey, St. Louis, Missouri. While Big Cat Ernie Ladd was still a member of the Kansas City Chiefs, party at my great grandfather's house, eating chitlins. Y'all know what chitlins are? Yeah, the, inner, the guts. Yeah. About, you know, now you know about chilling grease, right? So now picture my 97 soaking wet pound grandfather and Ernie Ladd drinking Hennessy, talking shit to each other. Wow. <laughs> and my grandpa ran up on him. Big Cat grabbed him by the waist and picked him up. His hand hits the ceiling. With chitlins on his fingers. <laughs> chitlins stand on the roof 50 years, bro. <laughs> <laughs> wow. True story. True but story. Ernie Ladd's chitlin grease. You can, you Ernie Ladd is one of the best promo guys in the business and a genius booker. Ernie Ladd was one of the all-time great heels, faces, and a brilliant person like our Tony Jones. Absolutely. Uh, was. Great tie-off, Mike. Great yeah. tie I'm really I, glad I, to have I, you again, Dom. It's been three years, it's over three years since you were on the show. Can you believe that? I, I, really thought, like, I thought it was like a year ago. I know, no, it's just that's where time goes. Well, the great, the great uh, Caesar Black, I, I've got to sign off because I'm hoping and doing commentary, you know, for a watch along.
for AEW's pay-per-view that uh, African-American superstar Swerve Sean Strickland wins, beats Samoa Joe. No stranger to the Bay Area for the AEW world title tonight. At all. At all. That's and what I do. Swerve Strickland is... We saw Dominic and I were in the back at the APW at uh, a small house show, you know, wow. at a school by... Uh, the Cow Palace, where uh, uh, he came in for his only APW uh, uh, performance was Swerve Strickland, straight out of uh, Lucha Underground, where he was a I tremendous, tremendous yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, that brother, Good night, guys. I, I, I hope tonight, and I'm not going to watch the paper because I'll, I'll hear about it, but I hope the one thing about Swerve, the one thing about Swerve, he doesn't need a manager, and I hope they bring back his Shaka Khan music. When he came out to Shaka Khan, it was magic. That was the most magical entrance in the world. He had to pull the crowd in. That, that, that was just, that was the butter sauce of wrestling. I got to tell you, the most over thing in wrestling for the past couple of months, though, and he is one of the most incredibly nice people as well, a la Tony Jones, is Prince Nana. When Prince Nana dances, it, he's touching people of all religions, faiths, backgrounds. I, 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 me, all and Nana talk. Nana. me and Nana talk. Me and Nana talked. I've talked. Me and me and Nana talked about. We started talking about ten years ago. Because we were like, like I, he, we did, we're in the money, and I hit him up. I was like, Yo, that's cold, bro. He's like, Oh, I like your shit. He liked my shirts. I like the style. So we we clicked. <laughs> like, we Good clicked. deal. Well, Don, let it not be another three years, three and a half years before we talk again. That's for sure. I'd be a regular. I'd be a regular. Yeah, I would love to have you on the show regularly, Boss well, Mike. But you know, I'll say goodbye for him on. On your end, but you can stay a minute or two, and you know uh, we we love having you on the show, and and uh, you're not a stranger to me, so you want to come back on the show, especially to promote the Onyx Cup. But we'd be really proud to be part yeah. of the whole thing. And you have my number, you have my phone number. Please don't be a stranger. Let's talk about the Onyx Cup. Let's, dude. If you want to work, if you want to, if you want to work, you know I always have a spot for you, brother. Well, I, I you right now. I'm I'm so I, I'm such a thing of the past, such a relic of the past. I think you probably want to give that shot to some people who are who are moving on the up and up. If you ever want some kind of hey. color commentary, okay, co hey. color commentator for your your video but, stuff. I said if you I said if you want to work, there's work. So whatever you want to do, brother. Like we'll, hey, we'll hey, find we'll hey, find a spot. Hey, what did kept what did what did um what did Samuel Jackson tell Colson? Maybe the world needs some old fashioned, bro. Like we're not we they, they need us. Like we, they, they, the young, the younger, the youngsters need us. You know what I mean? We're MCs. They're mumble rappers. They, they need us. Well, I'm happy to spread the the, the knowledge to the next generation if they're that's if all, they're that, willing that's to what listen. I want to hear. That's what I want to hear. I can't be the one. I can't be the. I can't be the. I can't be the only old crazy guy yelling, "Get off my lawn, bro!" You got <laughs> it, my friend. You got it. Hey, it's great to see you again. You're looking good, man. And uh, we'll be in touch real soon. I'll send you a link to the show very very shortly. Have a good day, man. You too, brother. All right, thanks. Bye. Peace.